All right, now I get to the rub, which is uh, how to, some, some, if you will, some buying decisions. And this is really where we're going to wrap it up and then hopefully have some good questions. But the, um, as I pointed out um, today, you know, for if I'm opening a building today, we're, we're saying for today, this is what you need. A four carrier DAS needs three bands. We typically do 700, 19, and 2100 megahertz. Uh, SISO, you don't really need MIMO unless you get a lot of density. And that works. It works great. Um, and because in the past, you could pretty much say, all right, that's the standard. Everybody bid to that. You could kind of get a apples to apples comparison. Now, again, as I pointed out, you now have nine bands just in that lower spectrum, plus the mid band, plus the high band. So the complexity has hugely increased. Um, you've got to really think through 4G today, upgrading to 5G, so you really want to find a solution that's software upgradable, so you're not you know, forklifting your equipment in a year or two. You really want to think about an infrastructure that might carry the low band and the mid band, and you've got to be thinking about MIMO and at greater levels now. So here are our recommendations. We broke it down into two slides new construction and existing construction. The first thing I'd say is if you if you're whoever you're utilizing as your consultant or your integrator, they should have some ERCs, that's the public safety data's experience, because they'll know whether you can convert the two networks uh, into one and get about a 20, 25 percent overall savings on the two systems. You also want to make sure that they've got good relationships with the with the carriers. Um, because sometimes you can get money, uh, and we're uh, we've been working with uh, T-Mobile a lot, and they got money to spend, so they're they're looking to take the lead on two projects we're working on, um, and they they want to accommodate for 5G expansion, so they want to go ahead and build in some 5G now, and because the customer is kind of willing to do that, they're willing to put in extra money to actually pay for the in-building part, and then you want to make sure you can get the RF source at no cost, which is pretty likely, and then. There's a now there's a whole lot of work around well, what exactly what exactly what frequencies are needed now and in the future. Um, so you got to go through all of that. You want to make sure that you've got that. Like I said, you've got a solution that's upgradable. You want to think about if you're building a network layer, trying to have that network layer cover the low and the mid band. Um, we think that you should very much consider even if you don't want to buy a DAS, you think you're going to get signal from outside at least putting the infrastructure in at a relatively low cost so that you're not surprised and then you have a whole bunch of disruption and delay because you got poor cell signal. That's why we suggest do the design, put the cabling in, especially if you can converge it with the ERCs at about 85% completion. Test it. See if you like how the cell signal is. And then you may possibly, because I said the propagation maps are kind of just becoming solidified. You might say, all right, look, I got a ballroom and there are going to be 1,200 people in there. I'd like, at least like to put in the cabling um, for that 5G solution that I'm going to add in two years. And that's actually possible like just now. It's only like just Q1 of this year. Is it viable to be able to do that? Um, existing construction doesn't vary much from new construction other than we don't really see an ability to um, well, it might be the case, but generally speaking, I don't think you can converge with the ERC, so it's probably already been solved or decided. So, uh, otherwise, all the recommendations are the same. And I'm going to mention one kind of overall other considerations, and then I'll wrap it up. So, I've mentioned TBRS a couple times. I think if you've got an environment where you have a lot of remote connectivity anticipated, especially if you think it's going to need to be mobile, um, that now is the right time to study whether a CBRS build isn't the right solution to kind of, you know, replace or combine, you know, <clears throat> a whole lot of your needs. <clears throat> the good thing is there are both Wi-Fi and DAS manufacturers for whom CBRS is effectively a sidecar add-on. So you can put in infrastructures now that would involve relatively little cost to add in CBRS. So that's one. Um, I think the other thing is, um, if you're, if you're thinking you want to just solve connectivity with Wi-Fi, I would strongly recommend you at least consider doing a preliminary DAS design and doing the cabling so that you're not doing what some of our customers are, which is we're scrambling and we're cutting holes in hard ceiling to get them signal now here right at the end. And then you should note, I think most of you know this, um, it's 
the, the number one reason why people choose a, um, a tenant environment, whether that's a you know apartment, a condo, a, a hotel, or a commercial, is location. But the number one reason why they they unchoose or disqualify is cell service. They walk in, they walk around, they go, oh man, I love the 10-foot ceilings, this is great, but I got no bars, I can't, I can't live here, sorry. And to wrap it up, yes, we'd like to help, obviously that's why we're doing this Thought Leader Series, and I, and I, I do actually mean that. Um, we are more than happy to give you some advice if it never leads to a sale. Um, the one thing I, I'm effectively the CTO here. The one thing I hate about technology is the way it's overpromised and underdelivered. Or people use the complexity to somehow spin a big web and suck you in and make you feel like, uh, I guess I'm stuck having to listen to this guy because I have no idea what he's talking about. So we really do love trying to help you clear through all the muddle and come up with a good, clean solution. So last slide, what's it boil down to? It is a much more complex world. Um, as you can see, you're looking at so many different operating bands versus the few that used to exist in 5G and the costs that are associated with it and all the implications of in-building and out of building and the licensing structure. It's complex. Um, so if you were confused about 5G, I hope I have dispelled some of that confusion, but I appreciate the confusion because I got a battle to keep it all organized in my head. Um, I will say that, you know, widespread adoption from all I can tell, I'm look, we're looking at five years. In five years, everybody will be on 5G. There'll be some expectation that you'll have the higher bandwidth than in the high band in your building, at least in the high density areas, and you should be sort of planning for that. Uh, we've mentioned some of the possibilities of cost synergies through converging with the ERCs, through using CBRS, eliminating two-way radios. You should look at that and really um, think carefully about how to get cost synergies. And then finally, um, love Wi-Fi, do a ton of Wi-Fi. I'm very excited about the Y-Gig advances that we'll see in the next few years. Still think it's best considered as a complement rather than a competitor to DAS.